We welcome back Tony Busby, the attorney who led all the civil co court cases against Deshaun Watson. Um, let's go back to this conversation with Judge Robinson and her decision. She described Watson's behavior as nonviolent. You have represented these women throughout the process. Would you describe that as an accurate ass assessment of the situation? I'm going to shy away from that just because I'm not going to comment on Watson's behavior. Um, but I will say that, that, you know, the judge can only rule on what was put before her. Uh, only four cases were put before her. Uh, there were many more than that. We made many more people available uh, to the NFL that they chose not to talk to. Uh, we also provided statements to them that they chose not to accept. Um, so, you know, as far as, as far as the details of the judge's ruling, uh, and some of the factual findings uh, she made. Obviously, we, we agree with those. Um, I'm not sure uh, what distinction she was attempting to make between violent and nonviolent, uh, but, I'll, but I'll let somebody else uh, sort that part out. Uh, I will say that the, the, the women that I represent, uh, as I said before, um, they were not, they were not um, sitting back waiting for the NFL to do anything groundbreaking. And of course, nothing like that happened. Now, we'll see what the NFL does going forward. Um, and uh, I think several of the people that I represent uh, will be willing to speak out about the NFL and how the NFL treated them in particular uh, and how this process has, has went forward. So uh, we intend to do that, I think, on Thursday. Uh, but until then, we'll just wait and see what the NFL does. I mean, you mentioned it, trying to wait to see what the NFL does. They're trying to still determine whether or not they're going to appeal the decision. What do you believe it should do when it comes to an appeal? Well, I mean, they're, they're in a position. Um, they, uh, they, they have a finding by a federal court judge who was mutually appointed uh, that fa made some very specific factual findings. Uh, we know what those findings were based on. They were based on only four women. We know there are many more women than that involved. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I mean, obviously, I have, I have strong feelings about it, but I'll wait and see what the NFL does, and, and then we'll hear from uh, the victims, and we'll have a conference on Thursday to talk about it. What type of contact, if any, has the NFL made with you or your clients throughout their investigation? Other than the initial interviews, zero. Uh, our attempt to send them additional information was rebuffed. Uh, none, of, none of my clients testified in front of the federal judge. Uh, I think that's a common misconception that four people testified. That's not the case. Not one of them showed up. Not, no, not one of them was asked to show up and testify. I'm assuming that they must have played their videos or must have played the interviews. I don't know uh, how they made that presentation. But since the initial interviews of uh, only 10, contrary to what the court said, there were only 10 of my clients who were interviewed. Uh, since those interviews, uh, we've had no contact whatsoever with NFL. Was the expectation for them to be reaching out to your clients? I don't know. I mean, I think the, the common misconception is, is that they testified uh, and the court was able to, you know, hear from them personally, but that didn't happen. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been radio silence with the NFL since uh, more than a year for us. Knowing that, what message do you think the NFL has ultimately sent through this entire ordeal? I said, you know, unfortunately, the, the exact same thing I said 15 months ago, I can say now the NFL has no interest, uh, does not care about the rights of women. Uh, they care about the bottom line, uh, they care about making money. Uh, they're trying to manage this as a PR crisis. Uh, but as far as um, trying to do anything to assuage uh, these particular women or, or women's rights or dealing with women's rights in general, that's not part of their uh, mission statement. And they've made that very clear throughout this process. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.